Hello, I'm Rick Green, and I want to know, am I depressed? Several patrons have actually asked about the difference between natural sadness and full-blown depression. So what is the difference? First of all, depression is classified as a mood disorder, as in clinically depressed, meaning you're seeing a doctor at a clinic and you've received a reliable diagnosis of depression. It's to the point where you are suffering. But here's the thing, you may not realize that you are suffering. Depression can come on so slowly, so gradually, you don't even notice what's happening. Now, to be clear, I am not a doctor, although I did play a nurse in a Frantics comedy skit. <laughs> my bedside manner was yeah, so-so. Okay, so at points in my life, I have been down, sad, feeling kind of depressed for any number of reasons, good reasons, usually. I've also been clinically depressed a few times, so I have some first-hand experience or first-head experience. Now, to make sure that I'm not talking through my hat, I, I avoid wearing hats, and I consulted a list of depression symptoms from sources that I trust. The lists of depression symptoms are fairly consistent. That's what I found. They don't vary much from site to site. That said, I found these lists flat, even kind of abstract. When you're depressed, you're not thinking or feeling things in a clear, balanced way. So you could read any one of these symptoms and go, hmm, yeah, I don't know, hmm, sort of, hmm, I hadn't noticed. They can seem ungrounded. So let's ground the symptoms in a real-life experience, one that we can all share as human beings, the Queen's Gambit. Now, in 2020, this amazing Netflix series about an orphan who becomes a chess prodigy garnered 60 million views in one month. That's like half the population of the world. Okay, it's 1% less than 1%. It's, still, it's impressive. If you haven't seen it, I'll avoid spoilers, but the sequence on the planet Mars was amazing, and who knew Khloe Kardashian could act, huh? If you missed it, feel free to substitute a new program you love, because you might be watching this later. So uh, maybe it'll be Sharknado 5, The Dust Devil's Revenge, or Napoleon Dynamite 2. Oh, I want a sequel. Sorry. Also, since depression only ever affects a percentage of the population, and even for most of us who have experienced it, the depression tends to come in bouts. Most of my life, I've been happy and hopeful, albeit, you know, a little anxious and scattered and worried all the time, but it's not there forever. So here are 10 signs that you're not depressed because most of us aren't depressed most of the time. Sign number one, at your book club, a barbecue or a dinner with friends, everyone's talking about the Queen's Gambit. That's a good sign. That means you're out seeing people. You're not isolated. You're keeping busy. I know when I was depressed, I tended to shut down and isolate and, yeah, you go, honey. Uh, uh, I'm too tired. That kind of thing. Sign number two. When people ask if you've seen The Queen's Gambit, you say, not yet. Don't say anything. As opposed to, no, not yet. Stop bugging me. Just, I don't care about some stupid you see, depression can make some folks cranky, irritable, prickly, short-tempered. Sign number three, you're not in depression. You say, no spoilers, because you're planning to watch it. You're looking forward with anticipation, not with dread or with ennui or worse, no future. With severe depression, someone may start wrapping things up, you know, and that can be a warning sign that they are planning to uh, check out permanently. If you know someone who's doing that, or if that's you, call a hotline, call 911, call someone you trust who isn't dismissive, or go to a clinic, please, for me. Sign number four, you watch the Queen's Gambit series over four evenings in a row. That's good. That means you're getting normal sleep. Depression interferes with sleep, so you're not up at 2.30 in the morning watching the episodes. Sign number five, you don't keep asking, so who's that guy again? That means your memory and concentration are good. You're following the story. For many of us, depression creates a kind of a fog. Unfortunately, that fog makes it harder to see the world and to see yourself in a logical, sensible, balanced way. In fact, the first ones to recognize that we're not our usual selves are often friends and family. 
unless of course you isolate, which is a problem, or you stop seeing friends and family. So there's the uh, catch 22. Sign 22, no, sign five. You watch the Queen's Gambit and you laugh, you cried, you were moved. There wasn't that flatness, whatever. Because I can tell you, when I was depressed, the listless, exhausted, done like dinner despair, it seemed like a sensible reaction to my life at that point. All I could see were the negatives. I'd get stuck on regret or bitterness, bleakness. Oh, if only, if only I should. It was only later that I could see that it was as if I had been wearing a spacesuit that had isolated me from joy, from feeling wonder and appreciation and gratitude. And it wasn't a sudden dramatic shift. The last time I was depressed, it was more like, you know, the kids are doing okay. I got nothing left to say. You know what? I've had a good run. Luckily, I never got to. The world will be better off without me. Believe me. No. It, no, it won't, it won't be. Trust me. If you have even fleeting thoughts like that, or ones like I had, call someone, get help, get it checked out. Sign number six. You sat there watching the Queen's Gambit riveted. You weren't shifting. You see, there can be a strong physical element to depression. You may feel sore, cramps, aches, headaches, and there can be digestive problems too. I was actually shocked to learn that our stomachs have neurons and they're connected to our brains. There's that what they call gut feelings, right? And sometimes we're great. And then sometimes, was that you? Sign number seven, you keep thinking about the queen's gambit when you're at yoga or at the gym or just a pickup game of basketball, good sign. That means you're getting outdoors, you're doing yoga, pick up game of basketball, all fun activities, group activities, and they produce all kinds of feel good chemicals. In fact, a ton of research has proven that for some folks, exercise can be as effective as medication. The catch 22 is that with depression, the thought of starting to exercise, which means finding a gym and seeing people and going somewhere and getting out of the house, which means getting dressed and that means finding it's too much. Forget it. Sign number eight. After binge watching three episodes of The Queen's Gambit, you were starving. That's good. That means you weren't binging while you were watching. You weren't binging on food. You weren't eating mindlessly. When we're depressed, we uh, tend to find comfort food and comfort food tends to be junk food, sugar and fat and all that stuff. And depression can lead to overeating or ironically, it can actually lead to loss of appetite. It's complicated and it's different for everyone. What can I say? Sign number nine, after watching The Queen's Gambit, you went out and bought a chess set. That's a good sign. That means you have motivation. You're wanting to learn rather than Oh, it's complicated, why bother? Oh, and you bought a cheap used chess set to start. That's a good sign. You're not recklessly spending on some expensive gold-plated chess set that you hope will make you feel better. When you're in depression, you may end up spending recklessly, having multiple partners, drinking, taking drugs, taking chances, anything to feel good. And finally, that was beautiful. Sign number 10. You actually tried playing chess and you decided, yeah, it's not for me. Rather than saying, oh, this is too hard. I'm an idiot. I'm dumb. I can't learn anything. No, you just don't like chess, but you still enjoy playing bridge or making jewelry, gardening, or think about it, model railroading. Just saying, just saying. In fact, I'm ashamed to admit that at the height of my depression, I lost interest in model railroading. <sighs> So there you go. If you've never suffered from depression, hopefully you now have a better sense of what it's like for people who do suffer from it. And if any of this sounds familiar, I have good news. It is so treatable. Depression is so treatable. I'll look into some solutions like uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, and we'll do more about exercise, the power of socializing, which is amazing. We'll, we'll address that in other videos. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Please share, like, comment, come by the house for lunch. Actually, the place is a bit of a mess. We'll come to your place. 
Thanks to our patrons for making this video possible. And if you want exclusive previews to the new videos and a say in the topics that we're going to cover, as well as being a part of exclusive patron webinars and patron only chat rooms, consider becoming a, yes, patron through Patreon. I'm Rick Green. Please take care. And remember, as we used to say on the Red Green Show, we're all in this together. <laughs>